Hi everyone. Welcome to the video lesson course Introduction to MATLAB Software. This is our 10th video lesson. This video lesson teaches about basic control loop and how Simulink is used to model control loops. Control loops are generally made of three essential pieces. The sensor, actuator and controller. Sensors are to detect the input signals. Actuators are to control the mechanism of the system based on the control signal and a source of energy. The controllers are responsible for processing the control signals based on the input received by the sensors. So this is the basic idea of a simple control loop. If we apply this to a process control example, let's say we need a control system to control the temperature of a reactor or some process equipment. So we can say basically the components of this temperature control system could be the thermocouple as the temperature sensor, the electric heater or the steam valves as the actuator, and the PID controller as a controller. PID controller means a proportional integral derivative controller. It is a control loop feedback controller commonly used in industrial process control systems. Hope that you will learn more about PID controllers in your process dynamics and control classes. So let's try to construct a system model for this simple temperature control system in Simulink to understand how we can use Simulink for process control modeling. So let's open a new Simulink model. We can search the blocks by typing on the search bar. When we create our system model for a control loop, we need a set point as the system on which we are implementing our control loop. So in this example, our set point should be the controlled reactor temperature. So let's drag a constant block from the library and rename it as the set point. Double click and add the constant value as 50 degrees Celsius for control temperature. So we add 50. So we consider that 50 degrees Celsius is the control temperature in our equipment. Then drag two transfer function blocks from the library. We already know that the systems can be mathematically represented by transfer functions. So we need two transfer functions to model the actuator function and the reactor temperature function. They can be some kind of differential equations obtained from applying heat and mass transfer principles to the system. We are not going to discuss here an actual temperature control system. For the moment, we need to understand how we can approach to model control systems in Simulink. So for simple understanding, let's consider some arbitrary transfer functions for the reactor system and the heater or the actuator. So let's enter the transfer functions by double clicking. Enter the values for numerator and denominator accordingly. So our transfer function for the reactor system is 90 divided by 20 S plus 1. And the transfer function for actuator is 1 over 0 0.05 S plus 1. So we have to enter 
the transfer function in matrix form. Then place a PID controller block and a sum block and connect the blocks accordingly. Finally, place a score block to see the output results. Flip the actuator transfer function block by right clicking. When we connect the loop from the output signal to the actuator, we need to right click. Mark the sign as minus for actuator input. The output signal is sent through the actuator and subtracted to control the temperature of the system. Open the plot by double clicking on the scope block. We can right click and select the access properties. Then we can change the range of the graph. So we change the y axis range as 0 to 75. After that, we run the system model. We can see that the control temperature 50 degrees Celsius has been reached to steady state response after 4 seconds. In this lesson, we discussed how to model a basic control loop in Simulink using transfer functions. We took an example for a temperature control system of a process equipment. However, the real temperature control system would be more complex than this. Especially there are various blocks available in Simulink to model any system in different ways. Instead of PID controllers, someone can use fuzzy logic controllers also. Our objective of this lesson was to have a basic understanding to deal with transfer functions and basics of modeling control loops in Simulink. This is the last video lesson for this introductory MATLAB video course. We hope you will apply these basics with more self-practice to be more familiar with these software tools. Until we meet with another video course like this, goodbye.